My guest for today, Liam McMurrow, ex-PBA player in 2015 sa Barako Bull. How's your basketball career in high school at college? Me, it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of an odd story because for me growing up in Canada, I actually never played basketball in high school. Um, I played hockey and lacrosse in high school and only later, so I, I, I graduated from high school uh, 17, turning 18 that summer. In the next two years, I grew, I think it was seven inches. And then everyone I talked to was like, hey, you got to play basketball, man. Like, there's no seven foot tall yeah. hockey players, you know? Um, and then and then I decided to try it. And I, I went to a junior college and I went to the, to the U.S. to play. I played four years in college there and then started playing pro. What are your question about college too, right? Yeah, so college... College. I went to two of them. I went to um, Marquette University, that's in Milwaukee, downtown Milwaukee in uh, Wisconsin. Um, so it was a really good team. I mean, I got there the same day as Jimmy Butler on the Miami Heat. Um, one of the seniors on the team was Wesley Matthews, who's playing with uh, the Bucks still. Um, we had a lot of NBA guys. Jay Crowder went there a couple years after I left. And Marquette always seems to produce really good basketball players. I mean, obviously, Dwayne Wade is probably the most famous one. I mean, it's going to be between him and Jimmy, it looks like, right now. But Wade's career is, is, is outweighing Jimmy's, I think, at the moment. But we'll have to see what he does in Miami with Coach Sposter. But um, then I, I, I transferred, and I went to Tennessee Tech for two years. I uh, played with the player um, Kevin Murphy. I think he played in the PBA for a little while, too. Really good guard, 6'6", six, 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 score. Um, so me and Murph, I think, were the only ones from Tennessee Tech that went and played pro. We might have had a couple other guys, but um, college was awesome, man. I, I mean, it was it was a, it was a great time in my life. I ended up graduating with a bachelor of science. The basketball was fun. The camaraderie with all the players are like brothers to you. You know, you're, you're practicing, and no one's really making money at that time. So it's everyone just loves the game, and they just want to, you know, some guys are there for school and they love basketball, but I mean. For me, it was just all basketball. I just loved basketball. Um, school was kind of an afterthought for me. But, um, you know, I still graduated. I actually started my master's there, too. So I graduated, and I still had an extra semester left. So I, um, so I started a, a master's in psychology. Um, but uh, I don't know. I haven't got around to finishing the master's yet. But <laughs> Experience play in PBA. I mean, so I love the PBA. I mean... People ask me about my career, and they ask me, you know, I tell them, oh, uh, you know, because everywhere I go, people ask, oh, did you play basketball? I say, yeah, yeah, I played, um, I kind of just stopped with the pandemic, you know, I've been only not playing for two years. And, oh, you played all these places, where's your favorite place? I tell them Philippines every time, because, first of all, it's competitive. I I think Filipino basketball is very smart. Um, it, it is tough, like, guys are physical, but I, I had no problem with it. I was like... I kind of liked it, you know, guys are being physical. I mean, that means guys are trying hard and people, you know, they're emotional with the game. So it's good. Um, but I love the food. I love the people, man. And like going to an overseas country that a lot of people speak English is very helpful too. Um, like comparing it to like China or something like it's very kind of hard to like order food and to move around and get taxis and do stuff like Philippines. I felt like I was embraced there with open arms. I mean, it really helped, um, I had a teammate, James Forrester, that was also from Toronto, and, and, and he, like, even when I was still in, uh, back home before I was going there, you know, Coach Coy Banal had James call me and make sure I felt comfortable, and then when I first landed, he came and brought me out, and I think it was the night of the Mayweather Pacquiao fight. It was just such a big night, and it was so it was so nice. Uh, everyone was friendly, man, from Coach Banal to... Um, and also, I had a relationship with, with JC Intel before, years before training in Las Vegas at Impact, because he came out one summer, even before I knew I would ever play in the PBA, because that's 2000, um, what would have been 2012 summer. I met JC, and then we ended up playing. So, three years later, we ended up playing together. Um, the Rocket, JC, I think he's retired now. That guy's like Willie Wilson, made it really easy to play there. I mean, we had like Rico Meyerhofer, like he was funny guy, Rico. Um, who else did we have? You know, Chico Lanete, like great veterans like that. R. Garcia, like we just had a good team. Like we're, I was joining a team where everyone else didn't think they were good, but I knew that if we all played together that we would be good. Like I think we came in and we had a bad record, man. And then 
the first four or five games, I think we won all of them. We were five and zero starting that conference, and everyone was just like, "What's going on? Morocco's not supposed to win," uh, you know. But it, it, I like you know when people think you're the underdog, and then you can you can you can rise up and beat the big big teams. You know, you beat uh, you know talking text, and we we you know Blackwater. I think we beat. Uh, I mean, we beat a lot of teams, uh, rain or shine. We beat, and then they ended up beating us in the quarterfinals. I think um, it was like some twice to beat thing. I can't really remember. It's kind of a little while ago, but um, everything, man. I I loved going out in Philippines. I loved all the people I met because even years after I played in Philippines, say I was playing in Taiwan and they gave us a break, I would fly back to Philippines, and uh, the guys would tell you like I would even practice with the old, like with my old team, a couple days, and then uh, and then I. Uh, you know, would take a break because I was supposed to be actually taking a break, but I just love the team so much. Yeah, Philippines holds like a special thing in my heart, man, for sure. And and in the PBA, I really wish that second time when I went to go play with Morocco that I didn't get hurt because it would have been, it would have been per- like I honestly think we would have won the Champions Cup because the level of basketball I was playing at, like if they thought I was good when I was playing for Morocco, the player I was at that time was like way better, like. Because I was just playing against Joel Embiid, I was just playing against Steven Adams. I was playing at like this NBA level, um, so that it, it would have been perfect. I, I would have loved to have won with Coach Black, and um, all those guys were cool too. Like all the guys at Morocco were cool. Um, it just sucked that you know injuries happen in sports, so it happens. But favorite uh, Philippines food and word. Probably gonna sound you know really simple. I'd probably just go with like something like chicken adobo or something. I know. Um, there were a lot of tasty stuff I uh, th- that I had while I was there. I just don't like remember the exact names. I know some stuff that I don't like. Uh, <laughs> I was doing an interview, I think, with uh, Dylan Ababu. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention. Very, very, very easy for me to play on that team. I really like Dylan. He's a really good guy. A really good basketball player too. Um, but me and Dylan were doing, I think, a Sports Five show, and they and they said, "Hey, well, you know, McMorrow, will you eat the balut?" And I just, you know. When you're getting interviewed, especially if you're on TV or something like that, you end up agreeing to whatever. Oh, yeah, balut, I'll eat the balut, but not knowing what that is. And then so when they told me it was the doc and the embryo, all this stuff, and I'm like, oh, my God. But there was this girl. Uh, she was on the show with us. She was playing professional volleyball in the Philippines. And uh, she ate it, no problem. Ah, big bite of it. I took the smallest bite, and I was still like, oh, no, it's just not my thing. Like, I don't even like seafood that much. So anything that's, like, mushy and squishy, I, uh, I don't really like it. So... My favorite, I would say chicken adobo. My worst, I would say balut. So <laughs> hard to be journeyman. Got to understand what it is. You know, overseas basketball game is kind of like people would always ask me, "Oh, where are you going to play next?" And I'd be like, "You know, when you're young, on the younger side of uh, your twenties, you're kind of like, oh, I want to play NBA. So wherever I, you know, wherever is going to get me to go to play NBA. But then it kind of twenty five and up, it kind of turns into like, oh, wherever I can go to make the most money." in the shortest time and hopefully I don't get injured and hopefully they have nice fans and they have good accommodations. And so um, being a journeyman is hard, um, but I think it prepared me for a lot of stuff I'm doing in my life now, you know, dealing with so many different organizations and different countries and different teammates. It just helps me deal with people in the world now. It's like I've seen every type of bird. I've seen all types that I've seen, you know, even like in college when I first met Jimmy, he was so, he's like, uh, I guess with Jimmy, like he doesn't really let you in, like uh, as a as a friend, like for a while, he kind of puts up this tough shield, like you know, at first, and but but that can come off as like him being kind of an asshole. Um, but then once you get to know him, you're like, oh, I see why you have that shield up and why you kind of don't let people into your you know inner emotions or kind of friendship zone or whatever. Um, but like just dealing with that, like that's Jimmy Butler, you know, dealing with uh, at a teammate in Argentina that was similar and I'm like oh I've dealt with this before so you're not actually an asshole I don't think I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt I'm just going to you know I'm going to just be who uh, who I am and just and, and eventually those people just warm up to you you know so um, yeah journeyman's tough but uh, yeah it's good why you choose jersey 55 I, there's no real reason behind the 55 I've um, I wish I had a cool story for it <laughs> 55 For me, um, I don't know, because I guess when I started, I really didn't know anything about basketball. You know, I was, uh, so the first year I played, I was 20, and I would just ask all these stupid questions, like, you know, they're like, oh, what jersey number do you want? I'm like, well, I don't know, what 
jersey number do big guys get? And they're like, oh, you know, 55, 50, 44, 32. I'm like, yeah, 55 sounds good. I guess I'm, I'm, I'm the five man, so you can be double five. But in, like, in college, I had double zero. I had, uh, I think I had 55 at Marquette, I think. Uh, but when I got to Tennessee Tech, Kevin Murphy was number 55. I go, that's weird for a guard to be 55. He goes, yeah, but that's my number, man, and I'm here first, so you can't have it. I'm like, okay. Um, yeah, no, I think I stuck. I stuck with 55 in some leagues, but, like, to me it was like I didn't even really care. I was just like, whatever, give me whatever number. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, it, it, it's more about the name on the front of the jersey and the name on the back than the number to me. I mean, I know some guys, like, take it, oh, I always wear 14, and 14's my number, like, for me, it was just whatever. I, I, I wore 50 sometimes, 55, double zero. I mean, yeah, so no no big story behind the number. <laughs> Sorry. Let's question your top five NBA players of all time. Then I have to put LeBron in there. LeBron's in there for sure. He's probably my favorite player right now. Um, okay, so I got four more. Let me try to give you one from each position. So point guard wise, probably Magic Johnson. So I got Magic, LeBron. LeBron at uh, we'll put LeBron at what do you put LeBron at I don't know okay so LeBron LeBron Magic I have to have Kobe uh, LeBron Magic Kobe I need some big guys though so I really like Elijah one Kim Elijah one so that's four so I only got one spot now it's tough so I got LeBron Kobe Magic Elijah one go with the really I'm gonna go Steph Curry Steph Curry, Magic, LeBron, Elijah Wan. That team. I don't know if anyone could beat that team. <laughs> that would be really good. Thank you for watching.